Hey guys, this is Marcus with the Pueblo City County Library District. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy right now. Uh, you might know me from the Barkman branch, where I host a monthly painting hangout called Happy Little Trees. That's where we paint landscapes with oil paints in the style of Albert Ross. Uh, obviously, with the shelter in place going on, we can't do those kind of programs right now. So instead, I'm going to try something I've actually been wanting to do for a while now, and that's start a program centered around drawing. Now, obviously, the reason people choose to actually come to the library over watching videos like this is for that hands-on interactivity. And even though this is a virtual program, I don't want to lose that interactivity in these videos. So if you can, uh, give me your feedback. Let me know the things that you guys want to see. Uh, if you want me to go over something more fundamental like perspective or anatomy or if you want to see how to draw a specific character or an animal um yeah let me know i'll be reading all the comments uh also show me what you guys make uh whether it's something you drew along with me here or something you did on your own i would love to see it so um yeah let me see those by the way if these videos go well uh maybe we'll continue doing them after the shelter in place um yeah, we would definitely be open to doing that, so let us know what you think. Okay, so in this first video, I'm going to start by going over some basics and fundamentals, like where to start, and maybe address a few misconceptions people might have about drawing and art in general. Uh, we'll definitely get to the fun stuff where we actually draw things, but you kind of have to know the chords before you can play the song, so to speak. Okay, so first off, let me go over some materials. Uh, you'll want a flat surface to draw on. Uh, I've got this giant clipboard thing, but you can use a table or a desk or whatever. Uh, and then... That's it. Paper and pencil. Um, it's pretty much all you need. And, uh, heck, right now that may be all you have. Uh, honestly, for years, I just used printer paper and whatever pencil I happen to have. So, if this is what you've got, perfect. You're set. Um, being said, if you do want to invest in some better materials, let me go ahead and show you what I personally use. So for pencils, you've got two choices. You've got wooden and you've got mechanical. Uh, both of them have their own pros and cons. With wooden pencils, you can get a much sharper point on these than mechanical. Um, even with a really thin lead on mechanical, you can't quite get the same pinpoint tip that a sharpened wooden pencil can get. Um, so you're going to get much crisper lines with these. Uh, also, wooden pencils are a lot better for shading and filling in areas, uh, since you can use the blunt end of the lead. The only downside is you do have to keep them sharpened constantly for them to be any good. Uh, with mechanical pencils, you're essentially sacrificing a little bit of that quality for, um, I want to say convenience, but I see it more as efficiency. Um, like, you may not be able to get that same sharpness or versatility that wooden pencils can get, but you can just press a button and you've got more lead, instead of having to stop and sharpen it all the time. Um, I'd say that be also because of that, they're more consistent, because even though you can't get as sharp as wooden pencils, they do stay at a constant sharpness, instead of getting dull and then sharp and then dull again as you sharpen them. Um, personally, I prefer mechanical pencils. I've actually been using the same pencil since like high school, and it's never let me down, so that's what I'll be using for these videos. Uh, but try both of these types out and use whichever you like best. So if you're going with a wooden pencil, of course you're going to need a good sharpener. Um, I prefer these little manual ones, the ones with the blade and you twist it. Um, I don't really care for the electric ones or the ones where you crank. Um, I just find it's a lot easier to get a good sharp tip with this kind. Plus, it's more portable. You can just stick it in a bag or whatever. Uh, if you're going with a mechanical pencil, you'll want some lead refills. Uh, your pencil will fit a certain thickness of lead, so make sure you're getting the right kind. It should say on your pencil what type of uh, lead it takes. Um, but do experiment with different pencils that use different thicknesses of lead. Uh, I personally prefer the 0.5 lead, but try different kinds and use whatever you like. Erasers. You'll definitely be doing a lot of erasing. Um, hopefully your pencil has an eraser on top, uh, which you can use for like small, quick erases. Uh, but you'll want, also want a good big eraser. Uh, a lot of people use the rubber pink ones, which are fine, but personally I prefer these uh, white plastic ones. They pick up the pencil a lot better and they leave less residue and they don't smudge as often. So yeah, I really recommend these. Oh, and also I like this pencil here because it has this sort of uh, extendable eraser, which you just twist here as it wears down. 
uh, and then you can replace it with another refill. Uh, yeah, kind of useful if you could find something like that. As for ink, uh, you'll see a lot of artists using like actual ink brushes and ink wells. Uh, those are really difficult to use and have the potential to get kind of messy, so I just use pens. Uh, these here are Pigma Microns, which come in a bunch of different widths. Um, see, they have a little number showing what width they are. Uh, and this one here, this one, right? Yeah, that one. Um, actually has a brush tip, which kind of emulates using an ink brush. Um, really fun to use. For drawing straight lines, you'll probably want a ruler. Uh, I like these see-through ones, so you don't cover up the spot that you're trying to draw on. Um, another thing that's useful is these weird looking things. Uh, these are called French curves. Uh, they're like curved rulers, essentially. Uh, they have all kinds of different curved edges all around them, uh, which you can use as a guide to make really smooth curved lines. These are especially useful when you're using ink when you can't afford to mess up your lines. Now for colors, here are the mediums I use most often. Uh, first, we have color pencils. I uh, don't actually use these very often because they're just really not my style. Um, I prefer really saturated flat colors and that's really hard to get with these. Um, with these, you kind of have to build up color and layers and such. Um, in fact, I don't even really have a good set of color pencils. These are just some random uh, Crayola knockoff pencils that I stole from my sister just for this video. Uh, but anyways, uh, even though I don't prefer them, you can get some really beautiful results with these, especially if you want finer details, these are going to be your best bet. Markers. Uh, these are Copic sketch markers, which are alcohol based. These are amazing at blending color together and you can really get some clean and vibrant results with these. Uh, they come with two sides. One is a brush tip and then the other is a chisel tip. And then the whole marker kind of has this flat oval shape so they don't roll all over the place when you're using them. Um, these are really cool. I really like using these. Um, the only downside to these is they're pretty dang expensive. Uh, this particular brand, Copic, can seriously get to be like six or seven dollars a marker at full price. Uh, maybe even more some places. Although uh, I have seen some other brands go for as little as like 50 cents a marker. Um, something like that would be better if you want to try out something like these. And lastly, watercolors. So uh, this is a pigment that you dilute in water. So you can get as soft and transparent with your colors as you want with these. Um, you can get some really pretty textures. Uh, they're also really cheap as far as art supplies go and they last a long time. Uh, so they're a lot more cost effective if you want to fill in like a large amount of color on your drawing. Uh, the only downside is they are paints, so they can get a little messy. Uh, and you do have to use a certain type of paper with these that's resistant to warping. So sometimes you might want to lay down some white highlights on your drawing, and for that I've used two different things. Uh, this is called gouache. It's essentially an opaque watercolor, and this is a white gel pen. Um, both of these are good. I'd say gouache is the objectively better choice. It's just better quality pigment, and uh, you can use it with a brush so you can put down as much of it as you want at once. Um, but this is pretty useful too, if you got one of these, and honestly it's a lot more convenient to use. And finally, paper. Uh, like I said before, if all you've got is printer paper, that's totally fine, um, especially just for practice and learning. Uh, but if you want to get serious, try out some good quality paper with more weight and texture to it. Uh, especially if you want to try out ink and those color mediums, uh, you'll definitely want some sturdy paper that'll hold those well. There's a few different kinds of paper that I use. Um, Bristol is this really thick paper that's good for ink and markers. Um, most traditionally drawn comic books are actually drawn on this. Uh, then there's watercolor paper, which is obviously good for watercolor. It's really absorbent and it doesn't warp as easily. And then there's sketch paper, which is good for just pencil drawings. It's this kind of thin pulpy paper with a more toothy texture, which is good for holding pencil. The paper that I use most often though is mixed media paper. Uh, it's this good kind of all around paper that works well with pretty much anything. Um, this is the paper that I'm going to be using. All right, that should be everything. Um, so as we're drawing, I do want to address a few concerns people might have about drawing and art in general. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions that hold people back when they're just starting out. And these are things that I've struggled with myself. Um, so even though this is kind of just a series of draw along videos, I do want to teach people how to think when they draw, not just what to do. 
So as those things come up, I'm gonna put them up on screen, all right? So first and most importantly is this. You do not need to be talented in order to draw. Um, heck, I would even amend that to artistic talent does not exist. I truly believe anyone could learn how to draw or create art. Humans are innately creative. It's just a part of who we are as a species. Uh, other things like athleticism or a good singing voice, those are talent. Like no matter how, how hard you train in your life, you'll probably never run as fast as Usain Bolt. Uh, but with art, everyone has that potential to create. It's just that you have to learn how to apply it. Uh, drawing is a skill, nothing more. It's something that you have to practice and something you have to build up and refine over time. Anyone can draw. So get that talent chunk out of your head, all right? Secondly, um, some people wonder if there's some sort of secret to drawing, like some sacred knowledge that will just click in your mind and suddenly you can see the code in the matrix or something. Um, the bad news is there is no secret. If it were that easy, everyone would do it. Um, but like I said, it's a skill. The only secret to getting good at drawing is dedication and practice. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it's the truth. Um, the only way to get good at drawing is by doing it and studying it every day. There's no shortcuts. It just takes time. Uh, but I promise, no matter how unhappy you are with your drawing at first, no matter how frustrated you get, you will improve if you just stick with it. Um, you might not even realize how much better you're getting until you look back at your old drawings. Um, that's why you should keep every drawing that you do, even if you don't like it, because you will look back at them and think, man, this is what I was doing a year ago. Like, you'll cringe at your old drawings. That's how you know you're getting better. Um, and by the way, I don't want to scare anyone off by saying that this is all about hard work and discipline, pain and suffering. Drawing should be fun. Uh, you should be enjoying it. Otherwise, why else are you doing it? All right, so segueing from that, you might be wondering, where the heck do I even start? Like, how do I get better? Uh, a great place to start is get comfortable holding a pencil and making strokes with it. Uh, holding a pencil for drawing is a little different than holding it for writing. Uh, when you write with a pencil, you have this kind of tight, firm grip on it, and you kind of hold it straight down towards the paper. Um, when you draw, you want to lightly kind of let it fall on your fingers and then hold it in place with your thumb have this kind of relaxed grip. Um, you might even want to hold it a little higher up on the pencil than you would when you were writing. Um, and it should be angled to the paper, not straight down, like angled like that. Um, you'll get a lot more control and be able to do much lighter lines that way. Uh, it might feel a little weird at first holding it this way, but it will become second nature eventually. All right, next, I'm gonna go over how to actually make lines with your pencil, which I know sounds really trivial, um, but if you're not used to doing it right, you're gonna have a heck of a time drawing pretty much anything. Uh, so first, you want to draw lightly. Uh, holding your pencil the way I showed you helps that a lot. Um, let the weight of your pencil do most of the work and just guide it. Um, a lot of people just use their pencil the same way, you know, they would write letters. You know, they would draw really hard like that. Um, that's just not good for sketching and laying down lines, and plus that's just near impossible to erase. Um, so yeah, try to get used to laying down your lines lightly. Even lighter than this. Um, I'm drawing them not quite as light as I would because they have to show up on camera. Um, but yeah, just really lightly, and then if you want them to get darker, just kind of go over them again and build them up. But always start as light as you can. Now, if you're finding it a little hard to actually control where your pencil goes um, and make smooth lines, it's probably because you're using your wrist and you're getting these really short and constrained lines. Um, what you want to do is bring your entire arm into the equation. Like use everything up to your shoulder. Um, again, it's probably going to feel weird at first to do that, but you have way more control over your pencil doing this. Um, seriously, learn how to use your whole arm. It really helps. 
So now you're probably wondering, uh, well, how the heck do I get used to doing those things? Do I just do them over and over? Yes. Just do exercises on your paper every day and get used to working with your pencil. Uh, just make lines and shapes. Um, fill the whole page. Just, uh, you know, make circles, make squares, make triangles, lines, curves, everything. Um, one thing you can do is make lines and then make identical lines next to them. That'll help a lot with uh, control. Um, or draw a bunch of circles and then draw smaller circles inside those circles. Kind of like that. Um, another good thing you could do is make a really weird shape and then go over it with your pencil and that'll help a lot with control. Um, what you're trying to do with all this is build muscle memory. Uh, build confidence. You want to make sure that your pencil moves exactly the way you want it to and you're not fighting with it. So try to do exercises like this every day if you can. Just uh, fill up your paper with lines and curves. Uh, do these little control exercises. And um, yeah, do those as often as you can. Okay, so at this point you're probably thinking, okay Marcus, that's all well and good, but when do we actually get to draw something? Now, the answer is now. Uh, the first actual thing we're going to draw is Stitch. He's my favorite Disney character, and I love him, and he's easy to draw, so let's do it. Uh, speaking of which, uh, really quick, another misconception that people have about drawing is this idea that you need to be able to draw everything from memory. Um, that's not true. It's hard to remember every little detail about every little thing that you want to draw. So unless you have a photographic memory, which I'm not even sure if that's a real thing, uh, or you've drawn a character like a hundred times, it's okay to use a reference picture. Uh, before the internet, artists would actually have whole albums of reference pictures. Sometimes they'd even travel places to take their own perfect reference pictures themselves. Um, thankfully, we have the internet now, so don't be afraid to Google whatever you're about to draw. Um, seriously, you think you know what things look like, and then you have to end up looking up a picture of a spoon because you can't think of exactly how it looks. Um, but yeah, use references. It's not cheating. Um, we're going to try to draw Stitch the way he looks in this picture. When you get good enough, you can learn to make your own poses and such from scratch. But when we're learning, uh, it's a good idea to kind of study existing drawings and try to replicate them as they are. Don't trace them, but try to break them down and draw them yourself. Now, the first thing you want to do when drawing something is break it down into shapes. Everything in the universe is made up of shapes. If you learn to recognize those shapes, you can draw anything. All right, so let's get into it. So Stitch is made up of uh, just a few big shapes. I'm gonna start with a circle for his head. And uh, this is pretty much all we're doing in this step is just kind of laying down a foundation. Like when you're sketching, um, treat it more like you're exploring like possible forms and shapes. You're not laying down the final lines here. Um, so once we've got this big circle here, and drawing a good circle just takes practice. Um, just do the best you can for now. Um, but remember, we're trying to break this down into shapes. So another good shape is uh, his nose, which is just another circle. And that's kind of just right up here. shapes. Uh, the one over here is a little flattened because it's turned away from us. Uh, and then his ears are kind of these big like half circle shapes. Half oval, I guess. his mouth it's kind of like a half circle um, but the top line kind of has this S curve here and then the bottom line kind of comes down and then over like that so let's go ahead and And 
then see his uh, head right there kind of dips in where his jaw is. So, let's see. Kind of down like that. I know this looks weird without all his teeth and everything, but we'll fill those in later. So now that I've kind of stepped back and look, um, that curve doesn't look right. And that's the great thing about having an eraser is you can just do it over. Kind of the curves downwards a bit more right here. And that's better. Now for his body, you're probably looking at that thinking, what the heck kind of shape is that? How am I supposed to draw that? Um, all it is is just a few different shapes uh, just connected together. Basically, um, we want kind of this big circle kind of right here. And then maybe a smaller circle kind of over here. And then just sort of connect those. Now for his arms, uh, we're going to go on top of these shapes. And that's a good thing to do when you're drawing is think in three dimensions. Um, this arm kind of comes out in front of his body, so we're going to be drawing that on top. So um, yeah, we can always come back and erase the lines that we don't want. So for his arms, we're going to put down some circles, kind of like right here where his shoulders are. And then his arms are kind of these long bell shapes. That's the thing is that this is also kind of how you would draw a person um, with these shapes and limbs and stuff. Um, thankfully, Stitch is a little more simplified than that, but that's pretty much all anatomy is. It's just shapes and knowing where they go. So now for his hands, the paws or wherever they are, um, pretty much uh, just these little kind of flat ovals. First fingers, I'm gonna kind of put in these little circles and then kind of just connect them. Claws, which is going to be this, going to be these pointed curved shapes. So now for his legs, which are uh, pretty much just ovals coming this way. Just going to be a circle here. And then, like, an elongated oval will be here since it's turned away from us. And those toes are kind of just these little ovals. Just kind of spaced out. His little stubby tail. Um, it's pretty much just like a half oval with like a little flattened top, maybe. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, shapes laid out, let's uh, start fleshing in some details. So let's start right in the middle with his nose. Um, his nostrils are just these lines which kind of curve up and then down like that. got these two lines above his nose. Uh, and then for his brow, I guess, two more curved 
lines up here. So as I'm looking at this, his nose actually isn't as wide as it should be. So I'm not even gonna erase, I'm just gonna kind of widen it a little bit like that. Go erase the other line afterwards. Same with his eyes. His eyes can be a little bigger, I think. So his teeth, um, these are pretty much just triangles. And uh, they get bigger towards the middle. And then his two middle teeth are smaller. And uh, I should probably make these overlap a little bit. So uh, can I get that effect that they're like in front of each other, seeing them from an angle. Those bottom ones are also triangles. They're kind of just triangles with like rounded corners. And then his tongue is kind of just this weird bean shape in the middle here. And then you can kind of see his throat, which is just kind of a half circle. Um, and then those gums kind of just connect his teeth with some lines right there. Okay, so for his ears, we can come back and kind of refine these shapes a bit. Uh, so the edge of his ear is kind of this like, S curve, kind of coming in like that. And the other end kind of curves in like that. And the other edge of his ear is just this curve that comes in here. And then we can do the same thing on this side, but uh, just mirrored. And then he's got these little notches in his ears, which is higher on this one and lower on this one. So it's basically just triangles. Okay, so then you got this little like tuft of fur on top of his head. Um, it's pretty much just these like curved pointed shapes. Just like one, two, three. Okay, so then on his chest here, we kind of have that same tuft of fur, which is just these kind of curved shapes. Uh, and then for his toes, we kind of want to give them a little more 3D shapes. So we're going to kind of come over here with these curved lines. His mouth looks a little funky, so uh, I'm gonna mess with this curve a little bit right here. See, that's the great thing about drawing is these lines aren't permanent. Like, if you think you want to change something, just go in and erase it. Do it over. Same with his eyes, I'm gonna kinda mess with the shape of them. Sometimes you don't see things that are wrong until you kinda get the context of the whole picture. But uh, 
and like I said, it's a great being able to just erase and alter things, especially during this stage. Okay, so that should be all the lines that we need. Um, let's go back and erase the lines that we don't need. Um, and see, that's another thing that may seem daunting to some people, is they think every line needs to be deliberate and have purpose, but it's not true. Um, that's why we have an eraser, so we can undo mistakes and make temporary lines that we get rid of later. So let's um, really quickly kind of go in and refine the lines that we want to keep. everything afterwards. Okay, make sure not to do these too dark, especially if you're gonna ink this afterwards. But, uh, just go over them. So now let's go in and erase. Sometimes if it's really hard to get in these little areas, you might just kind of end up erasing the lines that you want to keep. But uh, you can just go back in and redo them. So last step for drawing is uh, we might want to fill in a few areas, um, like his eyes or like his nostrils. Uh, so for that, let's go ahead and fill those in. And then for his eyes, he kind of has these little circles for highlights. You don't want to forget those because if you just fill them in black, they're going to look really weird and dead. Okay, so I'm going to call that a finished pencil drawing. Um, now this could be where we stop if you want. Um, not every drawing you do has to be a completely polished and colored drawing. Uh, in fact, when you're learning, I'd say most of your drawings should stop at this point. And uh, it's totally fine. This is totally presentable. Uh, but if you want to get this inked and colored, let's go ahead and do that. So if you don't have these fancy sort of pens, that's fine. You can use a marker or a Sharpie or even a ballpoint pen. Uh, just be careful with ballpoints because those smudge really easily. Um, these pens, like I said, have different widths. And put simply, we're 
basically going to do the outer lines with a thick pen and then like the inner details with a finer pen. So I'll be honest, uh, there's not really a whole lot I can teach you when it comes to the step. It just kind of comes down to having a steady hand and going over the lines. Uh, those exercises that I showed you earlier will definitely help with that. You have to get these lines right the first time because uh, honestly you can't erase with these. So you can't really second guess yourself. You kind of just have to go for it. And as you can see as I'm doing, it's good to kind of turn the page a lot. Turn the page like a book, but like turn the paper to get a, a good angle from which to do these lines. Okay, so for these inner lines, I'm going to use a thinner pen. Uh, oh, something like that. Okay, so there's a few areas that you probably want to fill in with black. Um, I'm using a Copic pen for that. Um, probably don't want to use one of these smaller pens because that would take forever and just be kind of wasteful, honestly. Um, you could probably just use like a big Sharpie for this, but we're going to go ahead and fill these in. Okay, so now that we're all inked, uh, take your big eraser and let's just get rid of all the pencil. Just leave the ink. Um, best way to do this is hold the paper with one hand and go away from you. Because way too often I've been going this way and caught the paper and crumpled it. Uh, don't do that. Just go away from you. You should be able to get all the pencil off. easy. Okay, so now that we've got this drawing all nice and inked, let's go ahead and color it. Um, so I know I said this is not my preferred choice of coloring, but since I think most people would have these right now um, over the other options, I'm going to go ahead and use color pencils for this. So make sure you keep these sharp. You'll get much more even coverage that way. Said, these are kind of like just cheap knockoff Crayola pencils, so I'm not sure how good these are going to be. I guess it's good enough. Okay, so um, yeah, hold your pencil pretty much the same way you would your normal pencil. Um, with coloring, I actually like to come even closer to the top, but almost like this. Um, that kind of helps you put down really even coverage. And um, honestly, this is pretty easy just um I mean, if you've done a coloring book before 
just stay in the lines. Try to go lightly first and then kind of come back over with more layers to darken it. See how light I'm going first. Uh, one good thing to do first that I didn't even do right now, um, keep a piece of scratch paper and kind of test out your colors and make sure they're the right kind that you want. So actually there's a few parts where uh, there's colors that aren't separated by black lines. So it'll be easier if we do those first, like see that pattern on his back or like under his eyes. So let's go ahead and uh, do those really quick. So for his eyes, let's get this kind of... All right, we're all done. Uh, last thing to do is sign your work. Let's see, today is April 20th. All right, we did it, we're done. Um, yeah, hope yours turned out good and uh, hope you learned something. And if nothing more, I hope you had fun. Um, show me how yours came out, I want to see them. Uh, post them in the comments on Facebook or Give me a link in the YouTube comments. Um, I'm not sure how often I'll be doing these videos, but definitely keep an eye out for more and comment and let me know what you guys think and what you'd like to see from future videos, whether it's more fundamentals or another character or subject that you want to draw. Um, yeah, let me know. So thanks for joining me. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.